It's been three years since I have dropped out of college and I want to tell you more about it. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Rahul Aire. I make videos on tech, programming, human nature, geopolitics, the power dynamics and try to make a saga that combines all of these things together. You can watch my recently two videos that I've made. But nonetheless, this point, this video is about my dropout experience. Now, in the past, I've made video on why I have dropped off college and why what's my views on education system but i haven't really explained in, in a way that really you know it kind of justifies because there was really question in the comment box like how what is your parents opinion do they really support you or not is it tough like is it something else so in this video on since it's happened three years i want to share my journey but to really make sense about what i have why i have dropped out what was the thinking behind it what was my philosophy what was the experience that i have faced prior to my first year in j and fridge itself that really made me to think about it where am i right now and what is my stance where am i heading towards the future but to really make sense about all of these things together i thought it wouldn't wouldn't it be better to explain the story of my life i mean what was my inclination in the childhood how was i brought up it's like what was what things that really influenced me the most so until and unless you are like the hardcore nolan tenet fan it's like to really like non-linear fashion here back and forth uh this kind of this kind of i would really love to explain them that way but linear is kind of good things like forgive me for my bad jokes but nonetheless here's the story of here's what my story is so growing up as a kid like i was born in shiru my, I spent the first 16 years of my life in Shiru. It's a it's a it's a small town and taluka in the district of Pune. For those people who don't know, I'll put this map up right here for the visual visualization. So I was first born and raised. For the first five years, my life was pretty much same as all other friends and peers in my own group. Go to the school, go to the KG, watch some cartoon, watch some spend time, and just chill, relax. But it was until like seven or eight years when I was like at that age bracket, I saw my grandfather switching the channel at his home native place to just Animal Planet and Discovery. And when I saw it for the first time, I just remember that it just grabbed my attention. It, the, I don't know why it was like the way they presented the cinematography the, of what BBC presented and all of that stuff was just amazing you know and during at that time Nagy also had some brilliant shows on space documentaries space series like cosmos which is my most favorite of like and neil deGrasse tyson just killed it in the way that he's presented i also really remember during the time like my friend hirsch has this had this book called space encyclopedia and i have bought and i borrowed his book for one day by the way this is my book right now and when i just and i just completely read it in just one day and this book really just lit my imagination on fire that it was nothing nothing in this world it felt like blissful it's a blissful experience so naturally i had a deep inclination to learn more about things so i was that kind of guy who you know just if my parents bought any toy i would i would probably just kind of i would probably just kind of play with it for like four or five days and i would really break it apart to just see what's inside in it so i had a deep interest of to really just know how the world works how this thing work so naturally due to the limited information at that time because internet was not there and geo revolution came in 2016 where internet was abandoned and and today itself you can get tons of content anything that you want absolutely for free but it was not that case so it was really the scarce thing about resources i still remember the first time that i saw internet was in 2007 at my uncle's home in thane I still remember that YouTube had that fat loading icon, it, and it was it was uh, it was fun watching all of that you know buffering videos buffering here and there all of that stuff, and watching like how RC planes, how RC aeroplanes are made, what is the things that is like how the eBay was there and all of that. So that was my first introduction to Google as a search engine. What is Gmail and all of that. But coming up and growing up to again for thirteen to like the ten to fourteen year age bracket. I naturally had inclination to space science and to really know more about it. So I had naturally had three choices to decide like what I have to make because in the in, in something like in fifth or sixth standard I just have thought in my mind like, what do you want to be like. 
so there was according to my own limited choice and what i saw on the night geo and discovery channel there was like two thing you can be a physicist just like stephen hawking einstein and all of that you can be an astronomer basically both are the same but they have their own nuances and subtleties here and there or you can be the third popular thing that is astronaut now i don't know if you are really like born after 2005 or 2010 the thing really is that you might be really fascinated with all of the blogger and all of the thing because they have the fame they have the fame and game it's just really like at at our age it's i mean <laughs> i'm i'm not that old to say that at our age but it's still like you know uh but still like astronaut astronaut was something like you know but like highly admirable like kalpana chawla sunita williams like uh, and all of that stuff is it was really fascinating for me so naturally in eighth standard at the 14 years i thought like how do you want to approach this thing together but it's really like you know i had a like instinct that i don't want to work in a backstage so what that really means is with that before i knew isro I knew what NASA is because I already saw the discovery and like Nadjio. They mention NASA frequently. One of my relatives said that, "Do you know Isro?" And I thought like I I really don't know what Isro is, especially in in like fourth or fifth standard. But later I searched about. Ah, man, the history is quite good. I mean, like the Rocket Boy story was if on Sony Live is right now is just great. Just ignore the factual error. By the way, if it, the story was mainly mainly focused on Sarah Bai. and humi baba but now let's come back to our point uh i i deep down i really wanted to just work in forefront like you know i i i kind of wanted to start them but right now at at the 22 years old life if i really realize that it's far more better to be rich and to be anonymous than to be poor and famous as what novel ravikant has said and i really agree with his quote but coming back to the point i really wanted to work in forefront Now, I don't. I don't mean what the forefront was when I was fourteen year old kid. So naturally, for me, the choice was to go about space. So, what was the better choice to study? What was the better thing to take on, like aerospace engineering or aeronautical engineering? So I, I thought like let's start up. Let's let's search about what, which are the best colleges. And I thought, and I just came to realize that IITs are the best thing to study. So after 10 standard I gave the Fiji entrance test I passed it and I went and I really made went, and I and I and my family shifted to Pune itself so so I studied rigorously for 2 years and I and within the first year itself I just thought that it's not a cup of my tea like I mean I I really like physics I really like to study explore things and I really just wonder here and there how it works and all of that but j is that thing you know where you can't afford to deviate from a split second and i realized that i have kind of like an ex- exploratory so like i like to explore the things i like to go here i like to go there i want to study here and there but it's you know to really just crack on to the j you need to have like this blind just like the horse have the blind to just focus in the one direction and i was not that kind of person to th- honestly I really enjoyed physics but I don't kind of really I was not able to solve the problems I was not able to solve the like uh, MCQ's problem that there was there was present in the test I always came last at the, like bottom 3 in the test itself and that gave me like the severe depression this depression like why am I not going why it's not really going anywhere so it came so it was just like you know I was kind of feel like hopeless but also I was trying like I want to learn more I was always kind of taking the feedback from my teacher like hey I'm not really understanding I want to learn more but I still like for some reason I I was not really able to kind of grasp the entirety of that thing so as the time move along it's like the 11th standard just came to an end so in 12th standard I was like you know uh, it's it's not a good thing and by that time it's like in 2017 I bought the Geo sim thanks to lines for making it free and it totally changed my life forever so when i was casually surfing on youtube like what it is the the youtube really suggested me two videos one is of spacex one is of tesla tesla roadster and naturally i have the deep fascination to like to just go deep 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 about who is this person who is making it and one person that i really found out was elon musk so and i really studied about his biography what his study what his st- stories and all of that and 
and I found that, that this man's story is just brilliant. Like, I mean, though I thought like if you have to approach aerospace, if you want to be the scientist, you can, you have to only go to NASA or you have to only go to ISRO. But that's not the case. This man really proved that you can create your own company. And America has this visual, like unique entrepreneurship culture, which they really just kind of go through, which they kind of really foster. I mean, heck yes, they even have the private jails. Like, I mean, that's absurd thing. They have even private military and private here, private their stuff and all of that. But nonetheless, I re that was my first handhold introduction to what capitalism is. That was my first introduction about like, hey, you don't need to go to NASA, you don't need to go to ISRO, you can create your own company and try to research on that thing. And that was my major breakthrough shift, which I have really carried from like from my childhood itself. I mean, I didn't knew that you can even do this thing. So that was really, uh, again, I would say that was a major shift for me to think about it. So I really just started to learn more about it. Learned, I, I rewatched all of the documentaries that I saw in my childhood about like Richard Heyman's like big bigger and like Richard Heyman's like uh, which was that show I, I don't remember I will mention this right here Richard Heyman's show on Nat Geo plus uh, like big bigger biggest and all of that document engineering documentary series and this if there's anything that I really absolutely love is engineering engineering and engineering like I mean it's engineering is ultimately trying to get down into the truth and try to build that stuff around that truth. So if you really involve like mathematics, mathematics is just a thing to really express their nature, express the thing. So what engineer really took that? Engineer took that mathematics, build the cryptography around it, and that's what we are really using right now in HTTP and HTTPS. So that is the, you know, all of the like scrambling, descrambling, building things that really appealed me. So. But in the but I was still like in the 12th standard, had in the dilemma that what to do, especially because I have no uh, kind of I was kind of really like hopeless. I was kind of really like, but uh, it's really like my parents are really heavily spended on that thing. So after that thing, it's like the Fiji fees. So to really just explain how much they spent, Fiji fees was around like four and a half lakh rupees for two year program. Since I didn't got any scholarship, and there was no quota factory before that 2016 that could really educate me that this is the thing that could really help elevate you so there was like major issues major trauma for me and my family it's like i didn't score well much so ultimately the result came in and i failed in GE. i didn't qualified for i i barely passed like barely passed my physics paper because i have lost interest in writing the paper for board examination and all of that thing was kind of really like a demotivating for me because I've really like gone through all of the things like slogging continuously for learning more about this thing, more about this thing, and ultimately spending four and a half, four and a half lakh rupees. It ultimately was the most painful lesson for me to. It was also the most painful way for me to become self awareness about who am I, what is my own human nature. And I have really gone through all sort of comments by my faculties, teacher, friends, like teasing me and all of that stuff. I'm not trying to act like a victim, but this is what my experience basically is. So, so if you really ask me like what I have learned, I mean, if I really reflect right now, especially what was the thing that really helped me, uh, I would really say that coming to Pune was one of the best decisions that I've ever took because it really opened my horizon to the possibility of endless thing, especially. One of the greatest advantage to all of the suburban peoples is that you have massive internet. Like internet is just, internet is the next big thing, especially like all of the economy that we today especially see. I mean, you are watching YouTube on online. You're probably using Airtel, Geo, V, BSN, and other local broadband provider. But it's really, but you know, Growing up to the scarce environment, I knew what was the value proposition of internet is. So I came along, I made good friends. I'm my it's like my horizon just expanded and get knowing to get to know other person's point of view. What is their experience? What is their own culture? Since uh, we at the Fiji had came from all corners of Maharashtra, one is from like Nagpur, one is from Sangli, one is from Satara, one is from Kolhapur and all, like there's a lot of things. 
so that was really the one of the fun experience that i had with my own friends and and still today i have my and still today i have i'm really frequently contacting with my own fiji friends which is a great thing but uh as the day ended i i was really in a severe trauma and depression and I, i was thought like this is the worst thing ever and i will never go below this lower point so to really kind of understand what is what was my next thing i naturally resorted to internet because whenever i had a problem whenever i had doubt like i always question i always think that why why is it happening why is it the thing this like why is it going through me how can i solve this so i i naturally came on to ted talks via ted talk youtube channel and tom bilyeu so after like ending the 12th standard for the next 6 months i was just kind of really going through all of this videos that they have posted like tom bilyeu ted talk and all of the creator that were really available at that time and that really helped me to gain massive perspective from all the people who have done successful in their own life be it from authors be it from business people scientists author writers uh and that has really influenced me to the much greater extent but i kind of also really knew at that time that i also was studying about colleges and how it works but i also really deep down i was knowing that if it's so like deep down i was really also knowing that my nature is something that i can't work into the workplace because i like to free i like to just speak out for myself and uh, if you are someone who are really like to just kind of you know if you are someone who really likes to work who wants that security who really wants to just work as as much as per what has devised to you that that's great but that was not really like a great fit for me because naturally what i said i like to explore more i like to gain more i like to speak for myself and i'm a big advocate of free will and freedom of speech and that is really problematic because you know people really say that they admire honesty but unless if you really be honest with them they they would really throw their shit on towards you which i have really experienced a lot of times so long story short i would really like to just tell you that i i kind of knew that i want to really go into the business stuff since i had the capitalism introduction with elon musk and his story like his uh, autobiography of, of ashley vance was really great and his challenges in 2008 was like divorcing his two wives like spacex and tesla was at the verge of bankruptcy and this guy really came along and managed everything like i mean that's like immense level of pressure like i mean this so that really appealed me to the much extent that hey we if you want to create wealth if you want to create value to the society you can try to follow this path so naturally i had some research ideas you can really file a patent on that so i have even right now i have the design like you know a better version of a pantograph railway pantograph and all of that stuff but still i mean when once once i got into the college i knew that uh, i really told my mother at the first day of my college that if the college is not going to serve what i need because i already had in my mind that this is the thing that i really want and i was already really going through all of the computers tutorial thing and all of that stuff uh, yeah one thing interesting thing is that i really need to tell you that before 10th standard if someone had told me that you would take out the computer science i would naturally curse you because whenever i really studied any interviews of uh, any iit in who a top ranker iit in he always used to go to iit iit csc and i thought like these people really are only behind the money and all of that stuff but today i realize that i mean without money nothing really works i mean especially but running only after money is i mean that's a strict submission it's really like a significant topic about it i'll come to that point about how i look as money but right now i really told my mother i told my mother that if college is not going to serve me what i really need i will drop out of college since i really like the idea about what i really want to do so i really got into it so the first 3 2 or 3 months just went on to kind of know each other friends in the colleges made something and all of that but as later the things started to kick in i really my idea of my idea of doing business and doing startup really just kind of really uh really just kind of really made me form so there were many ideas especially for me to like how how do we make meme searchable how do we make something like productivity stuff and all of that i'll come to the point about how what was my startup journey and idea but i really wanted to learn more about tech i really wanted to learn more about 
especially about coding and programming. So after the after watching the Tom Bilyeu stuff and Tom like TED talks and all of that, I just watched like Python versus Java, which stuff is better for which thing and all of that. So I came on to like JavaScript is better suited for me. So I started to know more about what is the architecture, how the internet works, what is the DNS, what is the like OIS configuration, like and all of the DSA playlist on MIT, which is really great if you want to learn more about mathematics. But although uh, DS practical application is kind of scarce, and I, I don't think it's kind of really useful. But anyways, coming back to the point about it, it's free. Like I had this thing in my mind that I want to go to startup. So it's really like, and it was around first semester. It's really like first sem of the engineering college. Yeah, that they forcefully made me to write an assignment. And I thought like, what is this? I don't really like. So I really argue them the perspective about, hey, what is this going on? I don't really, I don't see any value of writing an assignment, like writing the useless piles of paper, which I also mentioned in my this dropout video right here. So ultimately, that there was really like a tantrum between me, my faculties, and all of that stem. So I thought, hey, why not to just kind of really like quit the college? I just the thought really just came came out of my mind, and I thought about it for a week. It's really like considering what was my stance about it. So. I kind of really just went on to research about it on online because I had 3G internet. A Geo was already prevalent, so we actually had one or two GB every day. So that was really helpful for me to learn more about these things in a way that's much more helpful for me. So I came up to the plan like what? So I came up with the plan that what do I exactly need? So I I thought that these these are the exact things that I really need. I mean I only need Node. I need JavaScript. I mean, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React, and Node.js. These are the four things that I really need to learn. So I thought, like, let's come up with a plan to make a uh, like face mash. Since in 2018, I already saw the movie of face mash. Now, that's exaggerated. Even Mark Zuckerberg says that you know that's not how he really uh, imagined or he had worked with it. But you know, movies are kind of like an inflated thing. But nonetheless, coming back to the point, it's uh, I think what was where was it? Okay, yeah. So yeah, to the face match thing, I thought like this is exact thing that I really want to code. So I bought a domain. I just started to coding myself, learn more about cloud thing, learn more about in 2000 February 9. I started to learn more about it. So yeah, it ultimately I ultimately in 2000 2019 January I thought like let's drop out of college. So I eventually, I eventually went on to the college in the library just because their internet was really good. So that, but I really bunked all the classes and just went on the library to search more about it, type on more about it, and and I really enjoyed the process and to sitting in the, in the library all day, all along to just search about it. So that really continued on for one and two months. So naturally, someone really asked me that. <clears throat> What's your parent parent stance on this thing? Do they really support you, or do they do they really kind of trickle you or not? The answer is yes and no. The thing is that you need to remember, especially like they have already spent like four and four and five lakhs on me, and I failed on even in my own expectations, and I still kind of really don't feel good about like making them pay so much hefty amount, uh, four and five lakhs plus. They had really they had. All they had already lost their rent allowance that company had gave to them, so that was a really massive thing. That's a massive thing for them. So it was really like you know nuking. Uh, it was like nuking Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On top of that, once you really announce that you that once I really announce to them that I don't want to go to college, I'm, I, I will do on my own. It's really like exploding a nuclear bomb on top of another nuclear bomb, and really like. New King Hiroshima and Nagasaki twice, so you can really imagine the kind of outreach that they might have, especially. And since this dropout thing is kind of an alien concept for our parents, and they don't need, they don't know how to really react towards it, especially. So, uh, I mean, if you talk about really, uh, I don't know how to explain it, especially. But if you talk about the parents, especially now, my target audience are from 18 to 25, mostly, like majority of them. So I pretty much assume that your parents are born before 1980s and all of that. That the, the thing really is that about Indian parents is that 
they have grown in like scarce environment they have go- they have all they have seen all sort of adversaries and their parenting was kind of fucked up at least i can say what my parents says at least i can say for my father that he, that his parent didn't really gave him the kind of like the kind of like a uh, emotional validation that he needs that and he has really says and he has really gone through all sort of struggle in his childhood and naturally that struggle has something which is he has carried on even to right now itself uh he has seen all sort of things my grandmother wasn't very like you know so uh, my grandmother grandfather wasn't really very kind towards him he has always seen that insecurity and all of that and this is the thing which i really kind of uh, you know if you're watch if you're someone who has read really like watching from the age of 30 35 and if you have kids who are in really between of uh, like 0 to 5 if who are somewhat in between of 5 years old please do them a good parenting because if you don't give them good validation good attention if you don't give them like emotional support and all of that ultimately because of your parenting parenting fault your grandson and granddaughter will suffer a lot and that is what i'm really kind of you know i've i've seen this for myself because that you you know that emotional insecurity we need what it is it is what is with him him it kind of really reflects like a narcissistic rage you know and often times i really see that when often times i really see in instagram videos where a child is crying whining about silly things and often times we find it very cute enough but when when that child itself cries you know and its insecurity reflects in a body of 50 year old adult i bet you that that's not a very like a sexy thing to do and and i really don't know especially like how to just move on forward that there is a lot of tantrums there is a lot of things i have re- and that's just about my family itself i don't want to really just i don't want to really just go on talk about it because that's really like a thing personal thing and again i don't want to victimize myself rather i really see as a challenge for myself to really just strengthen myself mentally because it's ultimately a process ultimately the decision i have took so ultimately i should bear the consequences of it right so but yeah uh but sometimes i really feel that i know this sometimes is too much sometimes he's pulling this he's showing off his insecurity because of the thing is really you know our parents love to boast about ourselves in front of other people like hey my kid is doing this my kid is doing that and since because i am a dropout he can't really show to the other he can't show to the other colleagues that hey my son is dropout like they can't even know what it is and being a dropout myself i ha- i find it really hard for other people to explain that what am i what am i really doing what my other stance is so that kind of really like so that kind of really conflicts with each other especially so talking about that was like no part that what is the yes part the yes part is like i'm still living in his house especially like learning about it uh but it's really like i mean uh, i don't know how to really explain it well enough but i guess uh um uh, but yeah uh but sometimes i feel like you know it's the he's pulling just too much of string on the contrast to it my mother is kind of very like you know trying to understand at his best ability i mean she doesn't understand exactly about software things but she tries to understand what is my intention where am i heading i i really to and try to understand the economics of what i try to do on the contrast like i as i mentioned the, the due to the parenting stuff what i have previously mentioned my my father is deeply insecure within himself and that kind of really like insecurity reflects out as a narcissistic rage because he has not really gone through the self validation process self thing and it's it sometimes it just kind of feel really like goes on the top of the roof and i really want to say and i really want you to say that i really want to just kind of say that f things up right there but i i can't say that f word as of right now but once i really kind of have that financial stability i uh, kind of really go through that process uh i'm sure i would be really able to do such things right there and there but coming back to the point about this drop out thing like uh the best thing about it's like yeah that was the parenting stuff but if i have to describe this drop out journey in just one aspect that one aspect is just lonely as fuck 
Now, I didn't really anticipate that uh, this would be such a lonely process because I've been learning since like, so I suddenly drop out of the college, I said just dropped out, eventually after two or three months, I started to feel like, like lonely inside me. So, so naturally like, uh, so naturally I started to discover more on this thing, how to really get on this thing. So in the first video about the first few videos that I uh, released on this channel, I mentioned that why am I doing this YouTube thing? And this YouTube thing really emerged out of my own loneliness so that I can just bring all of my energy to all this YouTube thing together. So naturally it went on for a while. It just kind of thing and all of that. Yeah. So that was like parenting stuff and I have really gone through so it's like and, and that really gone through all of the thing especially i've really listened all sort of nasty things from my family relatives i mean mean hateful comment for like no reasons at all but uh but as i really say i i kind of see it as a challenge for mental strength to tough to toughen my mind uh but as as it really gone on but i would definitely say one thing that uh, there is a lot of challenges uh, in what i really do uh, and I especially if you but what, what I have really learned to ignore all of this tantrum together and just focus on my main career aspect right now because that is more important for me to just than to focus on what others are what what what's going in their mind itself so uh, so this is it's not I mean I don't know at this point of time it it makes sense or not what I'm saying it but uh, that's what it is but that's what it is but coming back to the point yeah so that was a negative part let's focus on the career aspect i have got to learn tons of things and i mean tons and tons of things so first i really underestimated the time that i that i really will took to learn about uh, software development software engineering i thought it's like oh this tutorial is this course udemy course is about 18 hours so i should learn mostly in two or three days that is more than enough okay but it took me around like two months to understand what the JavaScript is. But, you know, eventually every first programming language is difficult to understand. But once you really get hands on to it, once you develop some prototype application, learning second language is like a cakewalk. It's, I mean, you can learn the nuances and syntax in just a couple. I mean, you can just be familiar with it in, in, in a week itself. That's a really good thing. So in 2020, so it's like in 2019, I spent most of my time in trying to learn the JavaScript. In 2020, I spent most of my time in trying to learn the AWS serverless. Since I realized that I want to make a face mash, which I previously mentioned, and then, especially what I really, then what I realized is like, what is the best thing for me to really host? Since I really want my application to be scalable, to be fault tolerant and all of that. So for me, serverless really became an obvious choice for me. And in that sense, uh, Again, so what I so again like learning AWS was a bit more difficult than learning like Moon Stack, because the AWS documentation were not really clear, and it took me a long time. I took like uh, various things, and like fortunately at the end of the 2020, there was this playlist from there's this playlist from uh, Complete Coding by Sam Williams, and this playlist really helped me to understand about the serverless framework, to really understand more about how all these things together really work. So I became quite familiar with Dynamo, with all of the things together. And eventually in 2021, I made my own course on DynamoDB. But that took that really took me around four or five months because it was like massive project for me. And I was still learning how to make videos, how to shoot, edit properly. And, and all of these things together really just work. But in, that, in this year, in 2022, but in Jan 20, I realized the quality, the animation is not that good. So in this year, what I'll really try to do is I'll try to reshoot it again. I try to just kind of make the production quality up to the mark because what I'm really pricing it right now as 4,000 rupees, it's not that worth it. I mean, even even I really see like some of the 700 rupees course on Udemy, they have the superior production quality of what I'm really doing right now. So I'll really re-record it again. But this was just about my software development aspect there was a lot of things like i got to learn about various movies various stuff and if there's anything that really kept me insane during this all of the process was reading books and one of the and if there's any author that really helped me more
to understand every human nature that is robert green himself these all sort of things especially just wait a minute i think uh, if if you really ask me which is my favorite book right there then these are exactly the two books which i really like so like this is laws of human nature art of seduction and third one is yeah this one is the this one is also my favorite so this books kind of gave me an immense help to really understand how all these things work now everyone has a different uh, coping mechanism of how they would really like to work but i naturally like to naturally into boring i'm naturally being into the stuff like learning more about it trying to get it that's my way of trying to see things now naturally there are a lot of challenges in what i do but definitely my life is not that hopeless and meaningless uh, like as what i see like some of my friends that they need to go to the clubs and bar every weekend just to have an hangover and to just seek an escapism uh, i really like what i do that's what i have dropped out of college i mean i get to learn about these things together i really like to learn about marketing digital things and all of that stuff that really combined it together so that's pretty much the stuff is i mean if you really go to all of my twitter timeline you can get assist on re- just the basic on what the things that i really go through every day itself so or what are the things that i really learn not to go through that will be just kind of like metaphorically wrong itself so i like to learn about various things my biggest strength and my biggest weakness is that i have a temptation to learn all things it's like unmesh has unmesh is literally a, a unmesh from pixin perfect is literally a photoshop guru uh it's just really like you know there's a cinematic thing like uh, studio binder has read like good collection of how to make brilliant movies and all of that stuff so it's really like uh very dash him really makes good videos i really like to learn more about things but since you know my temptation kind of so my temptation to learn everything together kind of really like overtakes on me and that uh it's kind of really things that i'm finding it really hard to channelize because uh you know especially the thing is like there's always a conflict between like should you be specialized in one thing or should you be jack of all trade and considering what i really do and what my future plan is i should know little bit of everything together at least the certain stage that i could really communicate with other people suppose if there is an editor that i would like to hire for my future project i would re- i would like to communicate within his own terms if there is any audio engineer or like a uh, music composer i would like to communicate with him to his own terminology so that is that is kind of really like a helpful attribute for what i really try to do so i try try to learn about music try to learn about sound effects try to learn about uh, especially like movie cinematography i still remember i really saw this uh, especially like this video from vakas kazi and about davin shrizol and his like it was a crash course on color grading itself and that kind of really like shifted my perspective to look about movies now until previously i just saw movies for to like i want to learn something i want to learn more about this person but i really got to know that this kind of thing like you know you can also use colors to manipulate the feelings to manipulate emotions and all of that stuff i mean that was free like a, a cut through thing for me itself so that's uh, pretty much the basic thing that is right here so what is the future plan right now so first i need to talk about money because without talking about money you would think that yaar ye kya bakra hai it's like you know so the first thing is really like how do i see money as so for me i'm not kind of that guy who really like to flash money as like you know mr beast style to really give a give away by the way i have nothing against mr beast he's doing a fabulous job and it's and it's one of the unique kind of like written on investment that he's really gaining on his own channel by the way and he's also really on his way to become the first billionaire youtuber which is a kind of like a unique thing i mean that's a really great thing to to be honest but nonetheless so for me money is a way to buy comfort since we are living in the capitalistic world capitalist scenario our society runs on money you are watching this video on youtube like probably you have spent money to airtel jio vodafone idea bsnl or your broadband provider to really just gain an access to internet connection that is why you are watching this video on youtube right now you're spending your time you're spending your energy to try to hear my hear my thing that is what i'm really saying 
So if you really ask me like money is a way to buy resources. Now there are tons of studies who really show you that beyond certain point of uh, beyond certain point money doesn't help you to uh, buy happiness. But if you are really in a if you really are in a just kind of uh, you know in, in in an illusion that money doesn't buy happiness. So you will not earn money at all. I mean, <laughs> good luck to you. I mean, like it's, it's again, I would really like to say it's far better to be rich and anonymous than to be poor and famous. That what's a, like, a novel Ravikant has already said. And for me, what have what my career goals are since I want to do a startup. My requirement is far more than uh, what an average usual people or actual as what salaried employee would really need. So what I figured out is really like, you know, I need a lot of money. I mean, what lot of money? I'll just talk about it. But at a personal level, like how much money do you need to retire financially? And that number is, drum rolls, 4 crore rupees. Or at least you need 3 crore rupees, like on an average. So what is the math regarding it? And now there are various uh, videos that you can go on, like how to retire financially and all of that. But the basic crux is that if you want to live, if you let's assume that if your salary is one or two lakh rupees every like every month on an average, so to really gain that amount of thing, you need to have that kind of idle money. Let's say if you get fifteen percent interest on that four crore rupees, if you really just kind of invest in the stock market, if you diversify your portfolio and all of that, over the period of time, that would that would money would generate enough money that interest on that uh, base amount would generate enough money that it will help you to sustain your daily needs. So that's kind of really like a basic about three or four crores would really help you to generate that monthly one or two crore income. But the question is, how do we do that? Now, even that principle really applies to me. So what I've really just tried to do is like, I want to be the financially free since so I last year, I really made this DynamoDB course. But since so far, I've not really able to sell that much because I, I mean, I'm still new in the market. There's not a lot of trust. There's not a lot of communication that I've built. So for me right now, the biggest challenge is to crack the distribution, to just help other people, to really just make their serverless, uh, serverless transition more effortlessly. So that is what I'm really focusing on right now. And as I told you, like increasing the production quality is the part of it. So, okay, especially like, so what I really just kind of tell you that my current course pricing is right now at 4,000 rupees and I want to increase at 6 or 6.5 thousand rupees for American folks is something around 90 to 100 dollar, 100 dollar, 100 dollar uh, is like price tag. Yeah. And I want to sell at least 500, at least 500 is my target for this year, for the next this six months. Yeah. So I want to, so if you really multiply 6,000 by 500, it roughly comes around like 30, 30 lakh rupees. And that is enough money for me to buy like MacBooks since my machine is getting old right now. And M1 is just great, by the way. M1 is great and M2 is coming on the horizon. Uh, so it's straight to buy more camera, more gear. And, it's, and it is my deep desire to really get an office household so that I can hire and collaborate with more people since I'll since if there's anything that really excites me more that is working with people and that is the reason I continuously go into the meetups continuously try to visit and just be there constantly and all of the time so subsequently to earn that 30 lakh rupees and then to just continue to make some more course I mean they, they can be like lambda course serverless framework course CI CD pipeline uh, like combining EC2 with serverless and all of that stuff. Like, I mean, uh, I'm kind of interested in teaching that scenario, but I'm not, I will not be doing that for a very long time. I'll not be doing for, as I already mentioned, for a long time. Since uh, if you really imagine like the base amount is 30 legs, so that would really help me to just kind of satisfy my basic needs and to really kind of help me to hire designers, UI, US designer, some like uh, professional coders who even has some brilliant experience at a really at a temporary basis or even that kind of thing and subsequently we have to go even further now to really understand now this is like some serious thing together now it's combined now to really understand what are my future plans up right here now this is a thing which i have really mentioned on my like, on my website 
like p2p file sharing like or even something doing in the space thing space research and the data analytics so these are the three things so as i really mentioned my that that's three really like my first love is just like to know about space but if you really ask me like i can tell you about all of the what beetle gives is like when will explore like what it is or what is the star made up of what is this thing this thing and all of that yeah but i don't know the math and the physics behind it to really just explain it briefly and i have a lot of question that why does like you know star collapses despite of like strong nuclear forces and all of that why does atoms really come closer to each other i mean so naturally what we have learned like strong nuclear force will repel each other and all of that stuff <clears throat> it's like time being what is time it's like time is just an entropy function of an entropy it's really like and that really affects everything together from our uh, age everything especially yeah so if you realize it's like okay so i really want to explain this what what does the time as a fun function of entropy really means so if you have really gone if you have watched the interstellar movie so when when the cooper really goes to the planet that that is really near to the black hole since the gravitational pull is so huge the time becomes slow and and the relative and relative to them the uh, relative to them the one hour is just uh, something like seven years um seven years on earth so what we can really imagine is that the time is moving slow so that the chemical changes in body is also really moving slow okay and the thing is that uh it's really and as compared to the cooper is right now on something like this planet and as compared to that the entropy on earth is much more faster it's like uh entropy on earth is much more faster and entropy on this planet which is near to this uh, black hole planet is much more less so can we devise certain relations certain economics certain things that is there now i don't know what is the research thing what is the research paper out there but if you re if you think about it like what neuralink has done in like last 3 or 4 years so neuralink has able to achieve the feat of in the, in the into the bmi or like sorry bci brain computer interface that entire medical industries wasn't able to achieve in last last 3 decades and and his efficiency is something that continues to blow my mind always so i mean he always comes up with a new engineering thing new engineers it's like new engineering solutions ground breaking things and he the best thing is that about elon musk is that he he's free from the traditional thinking pattern i mean he just goes into thinking of first first principles so if you can you can search about what is first principle thinking that will really help you to learn more about it so it's like first principle thinking is basically trying to get the things on the basic fundamental level try to and then build some construct on top of it okay and then uh, so yeah that's that's the thing so what i really realize is that what these astronomers and all these things is is that they what they do is that they have brilliant talent but what they really do is you know in the past what is going right now they just uh, kind of they kind of sit in their own room they study they just research paper and wait till their hair gets gray how can we just help them to really speed up this process how can we bring some brilliant talent give them enough resources give them enough money and doing this thing in the age of internet where every company is trying to sponsor the every other youtuber that you see like this video is powered by xyz company this video is powered by xyz so creators on youtube are really earning much more money and there is definitely money on youtube to be made honestly but only if you have like subscriber above a uh, 1 lakh subscriber or 100000 100000 mark now honestly where am i right now i with my adsense revenue i could barely pay my own internet bill and all of that things so, but i hope uh, like say uh, like i'm th- i'm figuring out how to just increase it how to reach kind of uh, make it much more further so the second thing is really you know when i was just researching about okay when i was just researching about like web rtc and all of that thing i figured out like this is a really cool thing now web rtc is something like peer to peer file sharing so sri like we need something a connectivity thing and all of that but the problem with web rtc is that it's really capped around like 40 megabits per second and as compared to that we already have bit torrent protocol uh, which really allows you to share files at 
like there's no capping about BitTorrent. Like it's just it's just fabulous piece of uh, technology that is really happening. And probably you download a movie on Torrent, and even I download a movie on Torrent. That kind of equalizes the thing together. But the thing is that how can we really simplify file to sharing? So if you might if you want to share some files with your friend, you might really upload it to the Google Drive and then share that link to that other person. So how can we create a platform where the sharing the files is as simple as like texting someone, especially like, yeah. And there is other protocol like WebDAV, like, yeah, that WebDAV, which really allows you to just kind of hook your Google Drive as like mount Google Drive on your PC. And that could really help you to just kind of uh, understand how it really works. But that's really a cool, cool thing and protocol. So again, yeah, that's especially it's and there is like media collaboration tools and all of that stuff together. The real problem with what all of the service provider is that even if you want to say, if, let's say, if, even if you say that, hey, there is Telegram, I can send my friends to Telegram app and sure you can. There's not a problem with it. But the problem with Telegram is that uh, the problem with Telegram is just that what it is. OK, the problem. Uh, the problem with Telegram is that the bandwidth cap is very limited you know you can't even if you have like one gigabits of connection you can't just send you can't send that file above 100 megabits per second and most of these google drive services and all of that are capped around 300 400 megabits per second and they have still the time to upgrade the servers to one gig so how and 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 even if you go to the market and even if my ISP really offers me like one gig connection, but that is really expensive for me to kind of have and I don't really need it right now. But but there is no service like it's kind of like chicken and egg scenario. So you need to have. So how can we just build a solution which takes an advantage of that own connect, what, what, what do you say like like one gig connection and even if you apply for lease line even GeoRity offers you like 100 gigs of core connectivity, which is like mind blowing. I mean, you can download GTA 5 in just 10 seconds. Uh, it's like, I mean, that's really incredible. But you don't have like solutions around it. I mean, in server space, in development world, people can build their own stuff. But how can we build all of this thing together into the real life? Now, I know for those people who are really watching this, uh, it's kind of really hard to really imagine. So. I already made a very detailed slide and presentation in my future upcoming videos for this, but just uh, really try to understand that I want to make file sharing much more easier, much more simplifiable. If you want to sync your backup to the cloud and all of that, how can we just do that? So, uh, so it's really like you might not have like 10 gig of connectivity at your own uh, own premises or your own thing. So why don't you use our connectivity? So we let's assume that I as a company have like uh, 100 gigs of connectivity and you have data in the Google Cloud and you want to shift from Google Cloud to like Azure GCP uh, so like so Azure GCP or AWS so instead of using your bandwidth it's like instead of band redirecting it to myself why don't you just temporarily give me an access I'll just rapidly suck it and just straight out deploy it as fast as possible uh, and this second and this three like a there's also the second aspect to it is like you know media collaborators or movie production movie cinematography i mean they make tons and tons of footage they they generate like terabytes of data every day and managing that data is kind of like a hefty thing so there are some things that really help them but there are like let's say how i mean there can be more better solutions that i would really th think about it and i'm still researching about it so i'm that that is why i'm not have prepared any ppt for this thing right now especially like yeah uh, and majority of thing is like the, i really want to just kind of help people to share files together so if you want to share files from one place to other the goal is you should use our service that's the first startup that i've really want to focus second is what i've already previously mentioned about all of this like uh, space thing i would come up with documentaries that could really help you to understand more about space that there is so breathtaking that is so imagination fully uh, i really know that i just kind of i couldn't really agree with this comment on cosmos that nagiuri helped them to spark the interest about many youths out there and that is really true like i mean cosmos was the one thing that really inspired me to just know more about and to open my mind to the possibilities of the world 
and as really like Carl Sagan says, the reality of uh, nature is far wondrous than anything we can ever imagine. That's the one thing that you even think is about it. And yeah, the third startup is about like data analytics. So once, uh, once uh, like after dropping out of college, I was just casually, you know, lying on my bed and think and just doing my thoughtful time to think about how would I really just kind of. Uh, how would I just kind of really approach it? So there was really like sudden a popcorn moment in my mind that, hey, what if there was really something like an app or something that was really a thing that would really help you to kind of uh, kind of really like to automatic your schedule. So in like in to-do list application, you need to manually enter your schedule, manually need to do this and all of the thing. Why not there was really something and you know, a thing you know since like ai and ml is so popular nowadays popular nowadays so it would really understand your goal motivation and who you are as a person and it would really help you to channelize your thing so just like how facebook google uh, instagram really uses your personal data to really serve you in ads and personalized content in the same way how can we use the same data to to same data to understand your own human nature and to motivate you to motivate, to really just encourage you to take behavior and take actions, to encourage your, to encourage you to move towards your goal. That is the basic scenario that is right here. Again, I would say I've not made a PPT on how it works. In, in future, I'll surely make it up right there. So the so the application of these things are really simple. Let's suppose if you want to go to Delhi. Now I'm living in Pune. I've I've planned to make a road trip. I just I just told that app like, hey, this is I want to go to Delhi. And it will automatically recommend some of the best places for me. Uh, where do I want to go? Where do I really want to go? And all of that. What is the best food? Which is the best thing ever? What is the best rating on Google Play? So Google uh, Google Maps and all of that and all this stuff. So it kind of really helps you to bring all of the knowledge in just one thing together to really make you, to really help you to make an informed decisions. So the second thing is like, you know, let's say if you're living in South India, I know like rice is the major thing in in south india so if i know like what is your appetite what is you what do you eat and all that probably you like idli dosa sambar fish like non-veg and all of that stuff so i can even if you i know how much how much family members do you have so i can predict how i can predict yourself like let's say if you want to go to demart i can automatically generate that list that this is the thing that you should really go on and try to seek considering that you like this food this like this thing i mean there is a lot of thing that needs to be processed uh, that needs to be done in that stuff so and, and as you realized by now making this model making this thing is not a cheap thing i mean uh, if you look to all of the youtube material like from traversy media they make it look like the development is really easy which they should because they are targeting towards the beginner but if you look but if you move to the development aspect of any company complexity hits high i mean there's a lot of complexity that needs to be tackled and fortunately when i was when i started to learn about it no one really just mentioned that hey no one mentioned about how to build a scalable system system designs and all of that but nowadays luckily there are a lot of creators who talk about this thing like what is the scalability issues and all of that stuff so which is a good thing and considering hiring people who are really skilled in this thing are not cheap. I mean, developing this AI models that could really cater to millions of people cost around millions of dollars. And how do we really able to do that? And my goal is to just uh, my goal is to just kind of help you to this is what I really just say this. My goal is actually just kind of a. Uh, in that area what i would say okay my goal is to develop that model and and for that thing money is money is absolutely needed for that thing so and my aim is to remain bootstrap i don't want to raise a venture capital fund so like i want to make more course i want to build this thing i want to really just and then sequentially move on together so these are the three things that i really particularly want to do in the future as well uh especially like yeah, yeah. So again, that data analytics part is like that was about the personal thing. You can apply the same data in algo trading. You can apply the same thing, especially in wherever, like it's less in farmers. Let's say, how do we give them the better, better data analytics? Let's say the price of commodity in Madhya Pradesh is like different as price of commodity in Maharashtra 
as compared to Gujarat and all of that thing together. So how can we make, how can we just compile all of this research and empower farmers to make the better decision that, hey, don't use too much pesticide, don't use too much uh, all of this thing together. No, like try to shift on organic farming and all of that stuff together. So yeah, there is a ba there's a lot of things, especially that is coming up right there. And as I said, money is crucial. And again, I would really like to mention is that uh, it's really like, and so far to that 30 lakh rupees target, I've really barely hit around somewhat, what I would say is uh, like, I would really hit around one or 2% itself. So that's a pretty much basic thing that is there right now. Uh, I hope that this video was helpful in any ways, but I don't know like who this video is going to be helpful. But anyways, uh, if there's anything that you have question, please let me know in comment box below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Till then, stay connected and I'll see you next time.